Hey guys, so today's video is a beginner's guide to downhill skateboarding. I'm going to be covering everything from the type of deck you're going to need to the type of trucks to the type of wheels as well. All this and more is covered in the video, so stay tuned. So what is downhill skateboarding? Downhill skateboarding or downhill longboarding is basically going down a hill as fast as you can and then using foot braking, sliding to sort of reduce and negotiate your speed, making it around a corner and basically repeating that until you get to the bottom of the hill. It's my favorite way to enjoy spending time on a skateboard and is one of the best feelings in the world. So first things first, let's get this out of the way. Let's talk about safety equipment. At minimum, you're going to want a certified half shell. And by certified, I mean either the CE or ASTM F1942 certifications and some slide gloves as well. These two things should keep you protected and they should be what you have at minimum. You should also look into picking up some knee pads, some elbow pads, and as you get better, as you progress to skating fast and faster roads, you should also look into getting a full face helmet designed for downhill skateboarding. These are very appropriate if you're constantly skating above 40 miles per hour. So downhill skateboarding can be a little bit complicated. It does have a lot of moving parts and you simply can't just use any board. So in order for you to understand what different things do, we're gonna be breaking down this topic into other smaller topics. So I'm gonna be looking at the deck and the different features that make a deck suitable for downhill skateboarding. I'm gonna be looking at the trucks, the bushings and finally the wheels so once we break all this down you should really have a great understanding of what you need and what to look for in a downhill skateboard right so let's get into it so what should you look for in a downhill skateboarding deck so the first thing is stiffness you want a board that's going to be stiff now this stiffness can be achieved in various ways the most common way is about eight to nine plies of maple for example my Lanyard's cheese grater is made with nine plies of Canadian maple that makes this board very solid. It doesn't have any flex. Other ways stiffness can be achieved is through pairing maple with a composite. For example, maple with carbon or maple with fiberglass. For example, my Lanyard small blind has nine plies of maple with two plies of, or rather two layers of carbon on the top and bottom. My Comet Orbiter has nine, I think eight plies of maple or bamboo or something like that and some fiberglass mixed in there to give it that stiffness. Why you want your deck to be stiff is so that you get accurate control of your trucks as you pick up speed. If your deck has flex, your trucks kind of want to do their own thing independently. And because of this, it makes it easier to get wobbles as you pick up speed. Having a stiff deck gives you accurate feedback, accurate control, and lets you know what is happening on the road. So it's important that you get a deck that's stiff. So the next thing you're going to want to look at is the wheelbase. You're gonna to want to pick a deck that has a wheelbase between 24 inches to about 27 inches. You can also get one that has 28, 29, but 24 to 27 is the sweet spot. Now, you don't want a wheelbase that is too narrow under 24 or too long over 30 because a wheelbase that is too narrow means that you're going to have a very tight turning circle. And what this translates to at higher speeds often is wobbles because wobbles kind of comes from trucks that is too turny or from a setup that is far too turny. So yeah, 24 to 27 is the sweet spot. And you don't want it to be too long because then the board is gonna be really sluggish, slow to turn, and it's just not gonna feel that great. But yeah, 24 to 27 is the sweet spot. Right, so whilst we're still on the topic of wheelbase, let me quickly touch on what some experienced riders do and what some pros ride as well. So pros and experienced riders tend to run really small wheelbases, and I'm talking between 21 to 23 inches. And the reason they're able to do this is because they have specialist trucks designed to be run at those smaller wheelbases. And these trucks are really, really expensive. And in my opinion, puts them out of the budget range of beginner longboarders. So go for the wider wheelbases, they shall give you a more forgiving riding experience and a better learning experience as well. So next I'm gonna be talking about the mounting options. And what the mounting options are is basically how the trucks are mounted to the deck. So you have three mounting options available to you. You have a drop through where the trucks are mounted on top of the deck. You have a drop mount where the trucks are mounted underneath the deck, but the standing platform is lower. And you finally have a top mount where the trucks are mounted directly underneath the deck. Now, it doesn't really matter what you go for. In, in a practical sense, 
how it's mounted affects the turning and affects really the feel of the ride but as a beginner it's really hard for you to know what's going to work for you so my advice is just go for the one that you like given that it qualifies and meets all the other features however if i had to recommend something i'd recommend something like this the lanyard's cheese grater the lanyard's cheese grater is a classic top mount but it has a bit of a drop a micro drop it's not very visible but the standing platform is lower than where the trucks are mounted it also has a bit of rocker which allows the middle of the board to sit lower and that adds a little bit to the stability and stuff like that but uh, yeah i would really recommend a top mount with a micro drop or rocker if you're a beginner and i think that will give you an excellent riding experience okay but if i have to be a bit pedantic about the mounting options drop throughs in my opinion are the worst choice for downhill they're okay for cruising and just messing about drop downs are pretty damn good you have a lot of stability but your input to your truck still feels quite nice and they flow really well top mounts are the best in my experience but they're a bit unforgiving to ride they're not the most stable option and they're very responsive but if you do get a top mount that has rocker or that has a micro drop you really get the best of both worlds so yeah choose wisely <laughs> yeah uh, honestly just sort of go for what catches your eye and then you can make a more informed decision after once you have a bit of experience under your belt right so how much should a downhill skateboarding deck cost now you're looking to pay anything from a hundred dollars to two hundred dollars plus for really high quality decks now for a hundred dollars you're gonna be getting a deck like the eastside relic which is a really good skateboard it's gonna be great for downhill it's made well and then for about 150 dollars you're gonna be getting your cheese graters your pantheon gaias your pantheon chillers about there then as you keep going up the cost for $180, you're getting your rolling tree Arcadias. And these boards are typically gonna be made with composites. Maybe they'll have one ply of carbon, some fiberglass in there, maybe some vertically laminated bamboo or what have you. But yeah, you can get a deck that's $200, but only if you really like it. And boards in that price range typically have really fancy sort of bells and whistles. Like they have urethane bumpers, they're made with vertically laminated bamboo, so they're super lightweight, made with carbon, just really fancy stuff, but they don't do anything a deck costing under $200 doesn't do. So it's up to you, but if you have a budget, definitely get some of the lower priced $100 up decks. And yeah, don't try get a deck that's under $100. Typically, most of the time, those aren't very good quality. They're not made very well, and I'd advise you avoid them altogether. So as I'm moving on from decks, I quickly want to touch on the grip tape. Most decks aren't going to come with grip tape or are going to come with fine grip tape. What you're going to want is coarse grip tape. Coarse grip tape allows your feet to stick to the deck a little bit better. You aren't going to slip off if you go over a road imperfection or if you're sliding grippy wheels. So you're going to want coarse grip tape for your downhill skateboard. Good grip tape brands to go for are Hardcore Grip, Seismic Lockton Grip, Koi Grip, Vicious Grip, Mob Grip and yeah there are a couple of other brands that i've missed out on but any of those brands should give you what you need so use coarse grip on your downhill skateboard Next, I'm gonna be looking at what to look for in a truck for downhill skateboarding. Now, this could be a really extensive topic on its own. So I'm gonna try my best to be brief, concise, and give you the information that you need. So, yeah. Right, so first thing, let's look at the truck and break down its anatomy. So you first have the hanger, then you have the base plate. Then after the base plate, you have the bushings. You have your roadside bushing, which is a bushing that's on top facing the road because the truck is actually going to be like this when you ride it. You then have your board side bushing, which is the bushing that faces your deck. It'll be like this, so it'll be like here. And then you have your pivot and your washers as well and your kingpin nut and your axle nut. Yeah, that's, that's it, that's it. So let's quickly talk about what base plate angles are. The base plate angle typically determines how much your truck is gonna turn or lean. So a truck that's 50 degrees is gonna have a lot of turn with less lean. A truck that's 20 degrees, for example, is gonna have a lot of lean and less turn. So a truck that leans more than it turns is typically more stable at higher speeds. As I did say earlier, wobbles typically comes from 
trucks that are too turny. So having a truck that turns less is more appropriate for downhill skateboarding. So no, you're not going to go for the 20 degree truck. What you're going to want is a truck that has a base plate angle of about 45 or 40 degrees. That's going to give you the best lean to turn ratio and should be suitable for speeds up to 45 miles per hour. So that's typically what the base plate angle is and it's really the most important factor to look at when you consider buying a truck. Yeah, that was hard to get out. I don't know why. Right, so whilst we're still on the topic of base plate angles, I quickly want to talk about split angles. Now, split angle trucks is when the angle of your front truck is higher than the angle of your back truck. So for example, these trucks are 50 degrees in the front and 20 degrees in the back. And you'll find a lot of people running a lot of variety of angles, for example, 50 in the front, 30 in the back, 43 in the front, 35 in the back, etc. And what this does, it gives you all the stability of a low angle truck in the back and all the turning of a high angle truck in the front. So it makes your skateboard turn kind of like a car and you can be very confident. You can skate very fast with them. They're very stable. But as a beginner, I really recommend you stay away from these setups for now and just really enjoy skating the 45, 45, 44, 44, 43, 43, 40, 40 uh, truck setups that are available. And yeah, don't, don't invest in a split angle setup yet. But as you get better and as you're looking to go faster, they are definitely worth looking out for and learning about so yeah right so another thing to talk about is the hanger width now the width of your hangers should roughly be about the same width as your deck so if you go for a 9.5 inch deck you're going to want to pick either 165 millimeter trucks if you're going to run really wide wheels or 180 millimeter trucks so for example on my cheese grater which is about 9.5 inches wide 180 millimeter trucks fit perfectly on it and when i'm running small narrow free ride wheels on it it fits absolutely perfect so yeah you're gonna want to keep that in mind when you're picking your truck for your deck often as well when you're picking a complete downhill skateboard it's going to have an appropriate uh truck width for the deck so most of the time you don't really have to worry about it if you're buying a complete but if you're putting everything together yourself it's something to keep in mind so the next thing you're going to want to do, you're going to want to avoid trucks from cheap brands. So what goes into a high quality truck and why should you avoid a cheap truck from a cheap brand? The main differences is how they're made, the materials used, how well the parts fit together and how the quality of the bushings and pivots compare. So for example, if they use a cheap manufacturing technique and cheap materials, the hanger can bend over the time. The wheels don't all lie flat on the ground when the hanger is bent and that just gives you really poor performance and the wheels wear unevenly. When it comes to how the components fit together, if the trucks are not made very well, the hanger is going to be kind of loose and is not going to fit very well with the base plate. There's going to be a lot of slop. You're not seeing any movement with this truck because it's very, very well laid. And what this slop can do is it can give you wobbles as you get to higher speeds. The great thing about high quality trucks is that they're so precise and they fit really well together and that doesn't contribute to speed wobbles as you get faster finally the quality of the bushings and the pivot is going to be very poor the bushings control how you lean and turn so a cheap truck with cheap bushings isn't going to lean and turn very smoothly it's also not going to be very stable in a straight line so yeah so just avoid cheap trucks altogether buy high quality trucks 50 dollars isn't too much for a very high quality cast truck so i recommend you pick that and yeah you'll be good so how much should a set of good quality trucks cost you? You're going to typically be looking at paying around $50, maybe 60, maybe 40 for a good set of high quality trucks. There are models that are far more expensive, but as a beginner, the cast trucks available that are at about $50 are more than appropriate for you and are going to give you an excellent learning experience. So what are some high quality brands that you can get trucks in that $50, $60 price range? So there are very many and I might miss some, but some of the best in the business are Paris trucks, Bear trucks, Caliber trucks, Arsenal trucks, and you can't really go wrong with those four. There are a few others, but I'm pretty sure I've missed them. So yeah, in the description, I've linked an article that I wrote to the best longboard truck brands in the world. So check that out and you can learn a bit more also about the different types of trucks made, different sort of manufacturing techniques and stuff like that.
So finally, let's talk about a very important component, which is the bushings. So the bushings are these little things in your truck and they basically control how your truck leans and turns. High quality bushings are going to give you a very smooth control turn. Low quality ones are going to quickly flop in and out of the turn and they're not going to feel very good. I also want to touch on the stock bushings that come in your truck. Stock bushings are very general. They're usually all about 98 and they're very inappropriate for most people's weight. For example, a light rider might find them very stiff. On the other side of the spectrum, a heavier rider might find them very, very loose and might find that the truck is very loose and doesn't really feel in control at all. So what you're going to want to do is replace the bushings to some that are appropriate for your weight at your earliest opportunity. Right, so when it comes to actually picking bushings appropriate for your weight, most manufacturers are going to have bushing charts and they're going to tell you what sort of weight that bushing is appropriate for. So if you're interested in that, check out the Venom Bushing Guide and then Venom Bushings, check out the Riptide Bushing Guide and also check out Hardcore Bushings. Between those three, you should be able to find bushings that work well for you. Venom HPF bushings, which are these, are in my opinion some of the best bushings in the market and really everyone who uses them for downhill loves them so can't really go wrong with Venoms. Right, so to give you guys an example, these are the bushings that I'm using in my truck. I have this set up on the cheese grater and it's appropriate for downhill up to about like 40 miles per hour, at least according to me and my riding style. So I weigh about 150 pounds and I'm running a 87A Venom barrel on the bottom and the 85A Venom barrel on top. I also like to use the 87A hardcore barrels when I'm feeling like trying out something different. But yeah. So how much do you expect to pay for longwood bushings? Now you're looking to pay anywhere from $10 to about $30. Most bushings come in pairs and that's going to run you back between five to ten dollars but you're typically going to want a full set which is two pairs and that's going to run you about twenty dollars yeah i personally like to have an extra durometer or two to sort of mess around with to see what i like to sort of find the right feel so i typically end up spending about thirty dollars on four pairs of bushings i don't have good maths i'm sorry four pairs of bushings, $35, $40. And with that, I'm really able to dial in my setup, get the right feel, get something that's both stable, but still turn enough for my needs. If you are on a tight budget, this isn't an upgrade you need to make immediately, but I highly recommend it as it can be a game changer and it can give you a lot of confidence as you ride. So yes, do upgrade your bushings, but if you are on a budget, you know, just ride, just use the stock bushings, maybe tighten them up a little bit and you'll be good to go. Right, so next we're going to be looking at what wheels are appropriate for downhill skateboarding. This is a bit difficult to answer and I'll tell you why after I finish describing the different types of wheels. So as you start out with downhill skating, you're typically going to want a wheel that's going to allow you to learn to slide. The Power Peralta Snake is an excellent wheel for that. It has a fairly decent roll speed, it accelerates well, but when it's time to slide, it breaks traction very smoothly, very easily. It's often the wheel that most beginners go for and in my opinion honestly the best sliding wheel on the market today i will say that this is an old graphic and they do have a different graphic now but same wheel just as fun just as good so yeah Paul peralta snake is great and the reason that the Paul peralta snake is good is because it has round lips or radius lips and what this does it makes it easy for the wheel to break traction when you get to that limit of traction or that limit of grip it also has a very slidey urethane, a urethane that's not so grippy, so it is easy to slide. Next, after you've learned to slide, after you've gained a bit of confidence with your sliding technique and you're looking for a wheel that you can take down some roads, some corners, but still have a lot of confidence to rail the corner, a wheel like the Power Peralta 72mm Kevin Reimer wheel is a good choice. This wheel comes with square lips, so it's easier to rail and like go hard around a corner and have confidence that it won't suddenly break into a slide 
because of the square lip. The square lip sort of deforms against the road and pushes against it, and he doesn't really want to break traction. So yeah, this is a good wheel after you've learned to slide, and you want something that's going to give you confidence as you take turns at a faster pace, and yeah, there are other wheels, other square lipped wheels that are just as good, but uh, this is the one that I have on me, and this is the one that I'm recommending, as well as a slide wheel, other wheels like the Quay sliders, the Easy Hogs, etc. Those are good wheels for learning to slide. Remember, Urethane has excellent wheels as well that are going to be great for learning how to slide. And yeah, so go buy slide wheels, man. But yeah, if you. But yeah, as I did say, it is a bit difficult to answer because my answer is going to change according to your skill level. If you're a complete beginner, I'm going to recommend the Power Peralta Snakes to you because I don't think you're going to be charging down any mountain passes. I don't think you're going to be running around any corners. You're probably just going to be in your neighborhood, sliding a little bit, bombing your local hill, not doing anything too gnarly. If you're a really experienced skater, I'm going to likely recommend a race wheel to you. And race wheels have a lot more grip have a lot more slowdown power, are more aggressive. They have a finer limit between gripping and sliding. Sometimes they don't really slide very smoothly. They're very aggressive. So yeah, it's a difficult question to answer. But yeah, the wheels I've recommended are gonna be very appropriate for beginners. Right, and as a beginner, I recommend you stay away from longboard race wheels. And I'm talking about your Quay Killers, your Venom Magnums, and your Hogs Cheaters. These wheels are designed to go really, really fast and they're not the easiest to learn to slide on. So if you do learn to slide, if you do want to learn to slide, avoid race wheels. There are other race wheels out there, but I don't have them on hand to tell you which to avoid. But yeah, if you do have a grip run where you're not really sliding, you're just sort of making it down to the bottom of the hill and you have other ways of stopping, whether it's foot braking or whether the hill comes back up again, then yeah, go for race wheels. You're going to have a fun time. They're very fast and yeah. Okay, so what brands should you look out for when it comes to longboard wheels? There are a lot of brands out there, but here are some of my favorite. Powell Peralta makes great sliding wheels and great wheels for people who've learned to slide and want something better. <laughs> Venom, Venom wheels, or no, Venom skate, I don't know the brand name. Hogs wheels, Remember Urethane, Slide Perfect, Free Wheel Co, Quay wheels, and the list goes on. There are a lot of people and I can't, there are way too many. So anyway, but if you do go with any of those brands, you are going to find a wheel that works well. And yeah. How much should you expect to pay for a wheel? Most beginner wheels or most free ride wheels or most wheels that are going to be good for learning how to slide are going to be about $40, $50, nothing more than that. However, most race wheels are going to be 60, 70, even $90. And yeah. So, Right, so now we're getting to the end of the video. Now, if you don't really want to worry about the details, you can simply go for a downhill complete. And if you get a downhill complete from a reputable company, that should really reduce the stress of having to know what the individual components are, know that they're good for a beginner, etc. So yeah, so how much should a downhill complete cost? And I say anywhere from about $200 to $300. And within that range, you're gonna get a high quality complete that's gonna be appropriate for a beginner. It's gonna come with trucks that are the right size and right angle. It's gonna come with a stiff deck. It's likely gonna come with coarse grip tape, but if it does have fine grip tape, you can't replace it quite easily. And it's, most of the time it's gonna come with beginner friendly free ride wheels that have a round lip. And that might be easy to slide on. If not, you can always just spend another $40 and buy a wheel that's gonna be better for learning to slide on. And then the other thing that I do really want to emphasize on is avoid cheap brands. By cheap brands, I mean Magneto Longboards, Atom Longboards, Volador, all those stuff that you see on Amazon that are going for about $120, $130. Those completes, those are really cheap. Those are garbage. They're going to give you a poor riding experience. You're not going to have a good time. You're not really going to enjoy sliding those boards. And when it comes to going fast, it's really, really difficult. Most of the time, those completes are going to wobble out on you. Not even most of the time, definitely all of the time. 
take those death drops over 35 mile per hour and you're likely going to wobble out and die so i recommend avoiding them altogether buy a higher quality complete for the 200 or 300 dollar price and you're going to have a much much better time you're going to have a better learning experience you're going to feel more confident skating faster you're going to be able to feel confident negotiating turns and skating fast around them and yeah so avoid cheap brands and again i want to close off with this downhill is a niche sport and if you want to get good you're going to want to invest in quality equipment when it comes to other types of longboarding that aren't super serious and you're just taking it casually, for example, cruising and just messing about, then yeah, you can kind of get away with cheap longboards. But with downhill and, for example, dance and freestyle as well, you're going to want a board that is quality if you do want to progress. So yeah, get a quality board full stop. And yeah, that's it from me. If you found this guide to be useful, please subscribe. Please comment something. If you disagree with me, comment something as well so we can fight. Big thanks to all my patrons. Really appreciate that. I'm able to make videos like this because of you. Big thanks to all my subscribers as well. It's like 1,600 subscribers. That's pretty mad. Stoked you guys enjoy this content. And yeah, thanks. See you guys in the next video, which is going to be a choose greater review. So subscribe if you want to see that, if you haven't subscribed. And yeah.